I'm CT. When I'm not busy being Arrow, the podcaster, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to have a job, right? Mine just happens to be CS, customer service. You know, solutions, relationships, while keeping my team pumped up and motivated to keep a constant connection with each and every person who has chosen to stop into our location. Episode number 138, Ice Freezer Hell, Meat Crimes, and Call My Bank. This is CTCS. Transition walk, day number one out of four. Ooh, the week before Memorial Day weekend. The question is, are people going to take next week off? And if they are, that means they're going to be shopping like a wild-ass southern storm this weekend. It's been a busy week. Lots of interviews, about 21. And now I have to drop that podcasting lifestyle and go hang out with a bunch of people in a grocery store. You know, the positive in this is that I believe the grocery store is the place where community comes together. It's not at the church. It's not at a a city council meeting. Everybody comes to a grocery store. Not everybody goes to the other things I mentioned. So you've got to go in there with the attitude of, let's create a connection. I hear a commotion this morning and I, I go to the exit and I look outside and I see a Mercedes SUV backed into a, a smaller Honda and this guy gets out. He, they're both older people and the guy's like six six. Ooh. And yeah, and he's wow. he's very nice when he comes in here and he was just yelling. I could hear him in the store through all the windows and shooting. Mm. And I guess she let he was coming down the lane and she was gonna back out. She waved him by. He passed her and stopped so he could turn left. And she just went ahead and continued to back out. And she put a small dent in his bumper. You could see it. And um, there was this whole big, he's out there just chastising her and yelling at her. And I heard him go, I demand your full name. And it was hard to understand her because she was speaking broken in English. And people are coming in. They're like, hey, you need to go do something about that. And I'm like, hey, the cops fell in the way. I mean, I'm not, there's not a whole lot we can do. She was just leaving after coming in and asking to see the camera and just about gotten another accident Jeez. pulling out. Jeez. Wow. And, you know, in, in reality, it's not even the store's fault. No, not it's at out, all. It's out there. We just happened to have a camera pointed where it happened. Yeah. But, you know, I, I understand the frustration, but just own up to it. You know, you, the cops determine you caused an accident. There's not a whole lot you can do after that. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about how the ice machine was making these god-awful sounds. I mean, just screaming away. Well, guess what? I'm on ice patrol right now. I'm back here. We have to come back to this I- gigantic warehouse of ice coal to get the ice. It's freezing in here. Holy crap. Do you hear that motor running? But this is what we're going to have to do, and we're just starting a brand new weekend, so we're all going to be huffing and puffing and cooling off back here. Either that or freezing our asses off. So he took one look at you and decided that he was going to put the stuff back. Yeah. <laughs> That's an unprofessional theft. Well, yeah, he ain't a real crook. A real crook will steal it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't do it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of that. And the reason why is because, uh, you know, inflation is still through the roof crazy. And, uh, you know, since people are finding out that we don't have security anymore, they just automatically come to the store and see if they can get away with it. Was the ice machine down for you yesterday? Yes. So you had to run back and get ice too? No. And there's a sign on there now, so we're running back and forth. When somebody buys ice, we have to go back and get it out of the freezer. Oh, no, we didn't have any yesterday because it all melted. Wow, wow. So uh, Three had to have come in. So I'm glad you got your big old heavy coat on because that freezer is cold. I know. Too bad there isn't a place where we can store the ice so we don't have to go back to one bag at a time. The freezer and the deli, mm-hmm. that's jam-packed with stuff. Yeah. And you can't put it back there with the milk? No. It's not cold enough. We're going to do one bag at a time. Hopefully you're strong this well, weekend. Give me a cart. I'll be fine. Holly the ice girl. Oh, give me a cart. I'll be fine. <laughs> We've talked about this a few thousand times. People don't like doing self-checkout. I mean, you go down there, you know, you've got, uh, you've got nine different registers that you're keeping an eye on, and uh, your anxiety level goes through the roof. Well, what's happened is, is that we have one of our young bucks uh, who has contacted his doctor and said that it is, you know, it's really bothering him deeply that he has put in self-checkout. And now he's got a doctor's note that says uh, he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to do it anymore. So now how that affects the team is that when there's nobody to go to self-checkout, who do we do? You put somebody from customer service over there then until somebody comes in or you just end up, you know, being there for the rest of the night. 
and it's saying that there's another bag in us. I that I said she knows that she didn't leave anything here, and that I didn't hand her one of her bags, and that I only handed her one, and that she's like, I don't understand why the meat department people are like you can get better meat than me. Like, why are you guys gonna steal forty dollars of my hard-earned money from me? And I'm like, I'm not. I don't steal shit. Either. I handed her both bags that she fucking gave me. I put them in the cooler. They stayed in the cooler the whole time until she came by, and then I gave them back to her. You can see them on the security camera. Okay. But I will not be with people accusing me of stealing. No, let's do this. Let's solve it. What is she asking for? She's asking for dinner. She had some kind of marked down steaks and like a thing of pork neck bones that she bought. Pork neck bones. We got pork neck bones. That's, that's what she wanted. Pork neck bones. And she said she had two marked down steaks. And I asked her if they knew. What yep. marked down yeah. steaks were. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be done. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what kind of steaks they were. They will, okay. So when she gets here, we're going to ask. Well, she says she's, she doesn't want to come back for him. I guarantee you she's going to get in her fucking car. That's going to smell like rancid-ass meat tomorrow. Guess what? She found the meat. She found the meat in the car. In the car. Just like you said. Oh, That's my right. God. That's I told her she needs to apologize to him for, in person. She hurt him. Yes. She hurt his feelings really yes. bad. You could hear you know, that. How yes. Much, I mean, how... But she is notorious for losing things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. So now, who gets reprimanded? She should. Yeah. Because she... They're not supposed to hold stuff back there. Yeah. That's not their responsibility. Right, right. Yeah, but they, they hold it for me when, when I get here and there's there's some there's meat on right. sale. But I mean, but I, I tell them I'm going to put it in a certain place. Right. And then, yeah, but I don't put it in a bag. Right. And she puts it in a bag and just, well, forget it. Was she? She's done was, it multiple she, times. Um, did she really mean, I'm sorry? I Probably not. Okay, because you, you said she was yelling. Yeah. Oh, God. Because she started yelling in my ear. We talked about this the other day. They were cleaning and stripping the floors here. And so that meant that they had to get these special tools to, you know, go way deep underneath the shelves. And all of that stuff was coming out. Well, um, I was gone yesterday. And uh, you would think that they would have put things away. They did not. They were waiting for me to come back. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm putting all of this stuff away. Transition Walk, day number two out of four. Man, it's been busy inside the podcast studio. Spent some time with Drew Taylor. He's an entertainment journalist talking about the new movies that are coming out this summer. Please go watch these movies. Man, we need to get back into that theater action. Then I spent time with a bee whisperer. Yeah, you know, you've heard of a horse whisperer? This guy's a bee whisperer. And uh, his name is Lance Davis. And uh, it's National Bee Day. So uh, that, yeah, that's the reason why we do stuff like that. And then we're off to see us. Locating solutions inside a world that is consuming a lot is it too much Ooh. the weekend is here and i told you yesterday i told you on the first episode so that you know they didn't have the the ice machine up front uh fixed yet and so that means that the weekend's here and everybody's getting five to ten bags of ice and that means spending a lot of time in this cold ass freezer what's going on with the guy in the meat department so I think he's relatively new. I mean, he's been there a couple months, but he's also kind of lazy. And so they have clams that are half of them are broken. Yeah. Yeah. So the other day, a customer came up and said, hey, he, the guy in the meat department said you can change the price on them since half of them are broken. And I was like, I have to get somebody. I can't. I don't yeah, have the power to make yeah, that yeah. choice. And so um, we fixed it the other day with another manager. And then today he did it again. And I'm like. And someone would tell him to stop doing that shit. Yeah. He's like, he has a machine. He can print the price out. He could. Right. Or so. And then there's no, no questions asked. Ugh. Fourth trip in a half an hour into the ice house. Man, man. So the MOD said uh, it's, it's actually just a little bit below zero in here. So you come in here without a jacket on, and it's like for one brief moment, you go from your 98.6 to below zero. That's what I feel like. Just off at Mingful. The man visibly has a credit card. He wants us to call the bank, American Express, to, to find out how much is on there. But first of all, I don't know what his PIN number is. Second of all, I don't know what his birth date is. And they're going to ask me a, a ton of questions. Yeah, and then he comes to me and he goes, can you do it? He goes, and I go, do what? And, and I go, is this a gift card? And he goes, no. I go, is it a credit card? And he goes, yeah, I, I can't check your fucking credit card. Like, there's an 800 number on there. Flip it over. You call him. Yeah. It's your shit. Yeah, yeah. Because you want, me, you want me to wipe your ass when you go take a shit, too? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, man. I almost feel like Sammy Davis Jr. singing The Candyman. I've been putting the candy up for the past hour. I'm the Candyman. The Candyman. Oh, the Candyman. 
do 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 what you do in a grocery store if the average person knew the expectations that's what makes it fun it's never the same day Velvet Taco Friday. We've been waiting a long time for this particular taco. This will be the final one that we that's on the menu. We we tried them all, and uh, Tristan has already told me that this one is really messy. Uh, you can see that it's got the Mexican corn, and it's a gigantic chunk of salmon, and uh, looks like there could be some tartar sauce or something in it. But she says it's absolutely one hundred percent messy. Mmm. Oh my God. That's as fresh as you can get. Mmm. That salmon is really nice. It tastes like it's like a baked salmon. But it's the combination of the Mexican corn and everything else that's in it that really gives this thing a thing. I can't wait to find out what, what Tristan has to say. Wow, this has gone full circle. The gentleman that came in today and yelled at new guy Bill and I because we wouldn't, uh, you know, do a little background check on his American Express, you know, to find out how much money he had left. He comes in tonight and he literally just uh, tells us, he goes, he says, look, I wrote, a, wrote you guys a bad check. Um, I, I really want to give you some money so that it doesn't look bad on me. And what he did was he gave us a deposit slip. Not a check, a deposit slip. And we had to explain to him in 15 minutes that that's not what's supposed to be happening. We need physical money on this. What was the name of the taco? So it was grilled salmon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like they forgot to toast the corn tortilla, like heat it up a little bit because okay. it kind of fell apart. It yeah. was a little it messy, but the flavor yeah, yeah. has potential. Yeah. The only reason why I say it has potential is because mine had a lot of veggies on it. Yeah. yeah. So the veggies almost overpowered the fish. Okay. Yeah, but man, that fish but was that good. But that fish though. was so good because I tried it by itself <laughs> just so I could get a flavor of yeah, the fish. Yeah. And that fish is really good. And it wasn't one of those pre-cooked salmon things that they just throw in a microwave. Yeah. Like they made it on that the That was fish. real salmon. It was real salmon. Like like we would order from like our butcher here at the store. Like it was good. If it was in a regular regular a tortilla shell, would you, would you have enjoyed it? Because the corn thing got, that kind of took me in a different direction. Well, see, I like corn tortillas and it was so hard. It's so chewy. Yeah. Like not hard. It's just, if you understand what I'm saying about a corn tortilla, if you forget to heat it up yeah. then that's, it makes it just weird, like a weird texture. Would you do it again? I would. Um, but I think I'm going to, next time, whenever we do it, I'm going to ask for a flour tortilla, yep. see if it changes yep. it. Yeah. Um, but the, the peppers in there, I don't know, I don't know what they use for those peppers, but they were I'm so good. I'm still smoking. They were so good. I was like, why can't I find these really good peppers to go on my sandwiches at home? Transition walk, day number three out of four. You know, the one thing about being a podcaster, there's so many different lifestyles that are connected to this. Some people like to go in the studio once a week, once a month, maybe twice a week. They've got producers, they've got teams. I think it's the radio guy in me that puts me in that studio every single day, literally every single day. And the reason why is because we always did that thing in radio where you worked on Saturdays and Sundays. So going in that studio is just everything I've been doing for 44 years, but a uh, busy day. Uh, I had to transfer a couple of interviews I did while on the on lecture tour, and uh, you still take the Zoom equipment with you, and you still talk to people around the world. And then I had to do this show, CTCS. It's recorded on a smartphone, but then you've got to transfer it to the hard drive for future use. Yeah, podcasting. And then you go to see us. I just don't, I just don't see eye to eye with, with both personalities and, and both uh, dreams of having success. Yeah, number three, inside the tundra. Cold as hell in here. But I think I've been seeing that now for a couple of days, right? Holy crap. Uh, no word yet on them even fixing the machine yet. But it seems that uh, CT is the one that gets to go to the freezer all the time. Everybody else? CT, we could go to the freezer and get some, get some ice. CT, get some ice. We haven't done one of these in a while. Pet peeve of the week. Things that get underneath my skin very quickly. Hey, sir, uh, this is the only uh, oatmeal that you have that's over there. And you can tell that it's open. Man, I'm so sorry that it's open. Can you go back into the back of the store and see if you have any more? Well, here's... I, I can't tell them the truth because I've gotten in trouble with the MODs. Because I say, no, there's nothing back there. And the MODs say, just do customer service, dude. Just go back there and just pretend you're looking. You know, it's not back there because everything is out here on the shelves. But you do. You, you play that game. You go back here... I take a look, just, I get, you know, benefit of the doubt. But then when you go back, oh, I'm so sorry, man. It's the only one. And and you just go, I, I could have saved about 30 steps. I am convinced that Zen is going to put themselves right out of business. They might. I don't think it's a shortage. I think there was something with the FDA. Really? Yeah. 
I think that's what I read. So, so the so the government is stepping in. Yeah. Something so good that everybody's I've never tried it, but everybody just thinks it's the greatest thing on the planet, and now it's not available. Yes. So, what is it? Chemicals? Or is that what I mean? Is it Probably. is that like vaping? Um, I'm not quite sure. I just kind of like glanced at the headline. Mm. So it mm. Said something about the FDA. Mm-hmm. Well, will you try one of these grizzlies and tell me what it tastes like? Absolutely. You, you, um, you can try it, no. can't you? No. Well, you smoke, too. No. You should be able to do the two. No. no. <laughs> smoke and chew are two totally different things. <laughs> Transition walk. Day number four out of four. Whew. I pray for all people in retail. The stress, the anxiety, the people who will lie to you in the face and then chastise you for not believing in your grace. Wow. Uh, I think I'm more exhausted this week because I'm currently on the other side of my life on a, a four-week tour, a lecture tour, uh, to share the message with, with future broadcasters. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been seven days a week now for like three weeks in a row. So, and you know something? The majority of the people in retail, they're no different than me. They're working two to five different jobs. Because that's, that's the new America. Something that always puts you in a pretty good mood when you first arrive to the store on day number four is when you see these uh, guests that are coming in every single night, every single night. And uh, one of them pulls me aside first thing and says, man, you guys look like you're having the greatest time here. He says, I really am looking for a second job. Are you guys hiring? Because I would love to be a part of a team that's laughing, that's talking, that's working with people. And you just, you just have this sense of pride. It's like, wow, they do notice. Ma'am? Uh, like I said, I'll give you the regular money back, but I'm not going to money back. Sam, I've worked for 25 years, ma'am. You have a big... Okay. Uh, okay. Ma'am, you can do what you want, but I'm telling you, I'll give you a regular refund, and that's all I'm, all I'm going to do. Um, so, I, I said I'll give you a regular refund, and that's all I'm going to do. You totally called that one out. You knew it was a scam. Yeah, well, they they dealt with the lady. You know the lady that comes in and gets them? Oh, yeah, we were going to get on her last night on okay. Facebook. Yeah. So um, I got a fill on he's with her, and she sent him in here. So what do they do with the product yeah. now that it's left the building? Oh, they're going to throw it away. Unbelievable. It was over in her box. I don't afford it. Jesus. And they want double money back. Absolutely, by far, this was one of the worst Easter egg days. An Easter egg is when your guests are shopping in the store and they don't put the items back where they found it. They'll stick it behind cereal boxes, behind sodas. They'll stick it wherever they want to, including sushi, which we always find in the freezer section. We had one gigantic basket full of Easter eggs today. And guess who gets to put it away? The putback king. That's right, me. The family we had problems with earlier today when it came to uh, bringing back the, the cheese and the and the fruit, uh, they just hit us again. And uh, this time around, um, I said, no, I'm not going to give you double the money back. You didn't even buy this chicken from, from this store at all. Uh, if you want double your money back, you need to go back to where you bought this and talk to the manager there. But here, no, I'm not going to do that for you. Hey. If you don't mind, I'm going to go back there and throw out the rest of that pretty nice so that we don't have to chase you know, this ice storm that we've been doing all weekend. okay with that. I've only brought up 50 fucking bags a day. But you know what gets me is like, any other thing that's broken in here, it's fucking fixed within 24 hours. This shit's going on like four or five days. Yeah. Memorial Day is our biggest selling day of ice you next know, week. year long. Next week. I'm not doing that shit next week, so they better have it fixed. And every time I complain, and yes, I've been complaining, they laugh and they ignore me, they won't respond. Yeah. I'm like, no one else is going to go get this shit. Yeah, I looked at an MOD yesterday, and I said, hey, look, I said, I'm going to slip back there, and then I'm going to sue the shit out of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that kills me is when I walk all the way fucking back there, yeah. go in there and grab a bag and come out, and as soon as I deliver it up here, hey, we need three more bags. Yeah, that's it, that's it's it. like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> major crisis in floral right now nobody to uh, wrap the flowers and uh, usually it's the produce department that uh, will come through and, and go help out the people but but the people in produce are going uh, I'm not helping, we're too busy we, we're not going to help out in the floral department today so there's a big battle right now Why do you keep saying there's a baby smoking a cigar? I think it's funny as shit so <laughs> I get on the radio and I keep saying there's a baby smoking a cigar in the park a lot holding an umbrella well, and, see, what's funny is that everybody's starting to re- respond to you. They're I, coming up with their own one liners It's just that mental image to me is so fucking funny of like a baby standing in the parking lot smoking a cigar. <laughs> and and I, I was getting everybody with it the first time I did it. They're like, what? And they're all walking out to the window to, well, it was me. Yeah, I fell for it. Good job. <laughs> but but it's, it's just hilarious. 
Well, there you have it. Another exciting edition of CTCS. Man, when I took that transition walk earlier today, and I, I said, you know, we're going to go out there and hang out with the liars, the people that are going to do whatever they can to steal from you. I didn't expect it to be as bad as what it was today, especially when it came to the cheese and fruit lady, and then they come back and they do the chicken. And, uh, um, God... It gets under your skin. It gets into your soul. And and then you go, look, you got tomorrow off. The next three days. Figure out a way to recharge those batteries. Because remember, it's all about the solutions. Hey, do me a favor. Create your own podcast. Let the world know what's going on behind your curtain. Let us see your wizard. Because to me, that's where conversations begin. When you, when you let out the truth, set it free. Let us know what you guys do at your place. See you next week.